When summer finally arrives in Russia, people from all over the world descend on the Moscow air show. Here, the latest helicopters, civil airliners and military aircraft all perform in an annual celebration of Russian aviation. Everyone's come to see the highlight of the show, Yevgeny Frolov, a Russian aerobatics pilot with years of experience. He flies the Su-37, which differs greatly from American high-tech fighters. This unique Russian solution relies on vectored thrust and awesome power to fulfill its mission. In a series of breathtaking moves, Frolov demonstrates the wide performance envelope of his incredibly nimble aircraft. While the West relies on stealth, the Russian philosophy stresses super maneuverability and power in old-fashioned dogfighting. In the skies above the Zhukovsky Flight Test Center, Yevgeny Frolov and the Su-37 carry on in the strong tradition of Russian fighters. The origin of fighter aircraft can be traced to Nikolai Zhukovsky, the father of Russian aeronautics. He constructed the country's first wind tunnel in 1902 and conducted aerodynamic tests in his laboratory. The early Red Air Force flew fighter planes manufactured in Europe. Engines and aircraft were shipped to Russia in kit form and assembled at the airfields. During the early 1920s, civil war raged in Russia and fighters used by the communists included the British Avro 504. In 1924, Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin came to power. He recognized the importance of air power and gave needed support to the fledgling Air Force. He dubbed his pilots Stalin's Falcons and challenged them to fly higher, faster and further than anyone. Under the leadership of the innovative Marshal Chukakevsky, the Soviet Army and Air Forces developed their skills by conducting combined operations. They grew from an agrarian peasant army to a modern air power that could compete with the West. The first test of the new Soviet force would take place in Spain. In 1936, civil war broke out between loyalist forces aided by Adolf Hitler and the Republicans, secretly supported by Stalin. The aircraft sent to Spain were designed by Nikolai Polikarpov. These included the 115 biplane and the stubby 116 monoplane, nicknamed the Ratter. The 116s flew against Hitler's famed Condor Legion pilots. In sometimes desperate fighting, Soviet aviators managed to give a good account of themselves in the nimble Russian 116s. The forces used in Spain may have seemed adequate, but during the interim, Hitler organized a massive buildup of Germany's armed forces. Despite assurances of goodwill, German forces attacked the Soviet Union in June 1941. The war in Spain was one thing, but Operation Barbarossa was another. Using proven blitzkrieg tactics, Hitler's lightning tank and infantry assaults cut through the unprepared Soviet forces. The Luftwaffe attacked in force after finishing the most massive of its redeployments. Modern German aircraft like the Heinkel 111 and the latest Messerschmitt Bf 109s roamed at will. Much of the air force was destroyed on the ground. The stunned Russians defended the motherland with outmoded 115 biplanes. These aircraft managed to hold their own in Spain, but now they were shot from the skies by the newer, faster, more lethal German fighters. Stalin's paranoid purges of the 1930s deprived the air force of its best and brightest. The remaining officers were more terrified of the firing squad than Luftwaffe aircraft. Modern equipment like the 116 monoplane was no match for the Messerschmitt Bf 109Fs. 
the resulting onslaught was a bitter lesson for the Russian Air Force. Buoyed by his quick success, Hitler met with his generals to organize the attack on Moscow. They assumed a quick victory. Meanwhile, Moscow prepared for the worst. Defenses were strengthened while plans were made to evacuate the capital. In the midst of the chaos, aircraft designer and deputy aviation minister Alexander Yaklovev organized a miracle. The dismantling of Soviet aviation factories brick by brick and moving them to the east of the Ural Mountains. 1,500 industrial facilities and 10 million workers rode east on freight trains. Thank <laughs> you.